This is the simplest chart I could draw, <laughs> but I think maybe it will help you to understand a little bit better. So Qigong is much older, maybe even as old as 2000 BC, maybe 1000 BC, but for, for sure there's no question that it's older than everything else. Uh, they even found some Qigong-like postures on ancient pottery, and it, it's very interesting stuff. So, um, and this makes sense. I mean, a lot of cultures have been cultivating qi in a variety of ways with, bre with breathing. They just didn't call it qi, and they may not have called it qigong. But the Chinese certainly have been doing it for a long, long time. Uh, right around the 6th century AD, so mid-500s, maybe into 600, is when Shaolin Kung Fu was probably born. There was qigong already at the Shaolin Temple, and it started to turn into Shaolin Kung Fu. Shaolin Kung Fu, well, back then, who knows what it looks like, but um, it is a martial art that also focuses on qi, but it's characteristically more forceful and harder than Tai Chi. So with Tai Chi, we're used to seeing these very fluid movements, right? With Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, it's much, you know, the movements are just sharper. Does that make sense? Um, also, Shaolin Kung Fu has more of the, the animal styles, so like the tiger, the crane, all, all of those are into Shaolin Kung Fu. Now, we have some of that in Tai Chi as well, and that makes sense because Tai Chi really developed later out of Shaolin Kung Fu. So it was gradually building on the theories of like yin and yang, of qi, of the five elements, and some of these were incorporated into Shaolin Kung Fu, and then later, Certainly yin and yang is a, this is really, that's what this points to, is that this theory of harmony and yin and yang. But it's still just a martial art, and there are many other, there's a saying in Chinese that all martial arts came from Shaolin. So many other martial arts, for example, another one that is, um, also works with qi, is called, uh, It's really a cousin of Tai Chi. It's another martial art. It's not as fluid or beautiful as Tai Chi, but it really came from Shaolin Kung Fu as well. And there are a million others. I'm just giving you a historical perspective. And then, of course, with Tai Chi, we have many little sub-styles, which you do not need to worry about. There's the Yang style and the Wu style and the Chun style. Do not worry about that stuff. It's really not beneficial for beginners. Chuan, also spelled Chuan, basically just means we could substitute the word Kung Fu. So here we could say, instead of Shaolin Kung Fu, we could say Shaolin Chuan. Most people spell it Tai Chi Chuan when they spell it in the full version. It could be spelled that way too. But we could just as easily say Tai Chi Kung Fu. It's just historical. There's, it's, as this stuff was translated into English, it got confusing. Either term, is, either term, Kung Fu or Chuan, means martial art. That's it. And usually when they're referring to a martial art in Chinese, they're referring to not just empty hands, but also weapons. Uh, it's um, a characteristic feature of Chinese martial arts is that there's almost always weapons training later. Uh, so Tai Chi, for example, has the sword. There's lots of weapons in Tai Chi and Shaolin Kung Fu. Obviously, you can't start learning, or it's not, it's not so great to start learning the sword until you have some of the basics of Tai Chi. But the movements, for example, my sword, <laughs> the movements of the, of the Tai Chi sword would also be very simple, they would be very flowing, right? So they're not, they're, they're, not, um, they're not as sharp as some of the movements would be in another style. Make sense? Okay, questions. Does that give you a, a very basic overview of, of what Tai Chi is?